So basically, this is what we demonstrated in the afternoon during the live workshop, and uh, we are going to just give a brief uh, description of what it is. And uh, as we were discussing in the afternoon during the live workshop, that epidural fibrosis or epidural adhesions are generally defined as a non-physiological scar formation secondary to local inflammation. So whenever there are recurrent disc herniations, reticulopathies, there is bound to be uh, inflammatory changes. And if it is recurrent, there, there is bound to be some fibrosis. This is because of the tissue trauma which happened in the epidural space. And of course, the major culprit is, is, is a surgery. And if you are repeatedly operating on a patient, you are adding on to the epidural fibrosis and epidural adhesions. And almost it is said that 46%, although I hate to use this term, fail back surgery syndrome, 46% of post laminectomy persistent pain syndrome, uh, they have uh, epidural fibrosis. of recurrent inflammation um, because of disc bulges or because of surgery. They complain with severe paresthesias. They have leg pain like the one which we demonstrated to you, burning sensation in the back and leg, leg, and, and the leg and back. There is a restricted mobility. We call them a spinal cripple because they are not able to do their activities of daily living. Their sleep hygiene is disturbed. The paresthesias are very unpleasant and nothing much you can do with the help of medication. You may give high doses of pregabalin, you may give high doses of opioids, nothing works for them. You think that there is something in the mind, you do psychocognitive behavioral therapy, nothing works. Bladder and ball may also be affected if, the, if it is the quadri equina which is being affected because of this fibrosis. Typical example, you can see the back of this patient who has been operated twice. A big laminectomy, discectomy and fusion was done once in 2014. 2019. This is nothing. I have a, I have had patients who had seven operations, seven surgeries of the spine, and he was ready for the eighth one till till a neurosurgeon told him enough is enough. Now we let's go, go for a pain management. So this patient presented with paresthesias, leg pain, back pain for last one year. Typical presentation of epidural fibrosis. Restricted mobility, paresthesias in leg, unpleasant and uh, un, uh, lot of uh, unpleasantness. So two to four operation, typical patient who would come with fibrosis would be MRI showing arachnoiditis and epidural fibrosis, recurrent disc herniation, non-respirative sleep, hardly four to five uh, hours. And of course, if you do a, a subjective or uh, objective evaluation, you will find that they are depressed and anxious because of the chronic pain. They have family problems, socioeconomic problems, high dose of opioids. Unlikely that further surgery will help uh, in, in management of pain. Often, as I mentioned, referred to as fail back, but it is better to call it as a post-operative chronic leg and back syndrome. And as you see, there is, uh, the MRI would show you arachnoiditis and uh, perineural fibrosis, epidural fibrosis, and I am sure as surgeon you would also agree with me that even uh, a, another further surgery is not going to help. There is a recurrent disc protrusion, as you can see, uh, the recurrent disc protrusion, and uh, lateral canal stenosis, all these are adding on to the problem. So basically you are left with no choice but to do some, something which is called epidural adhesiolysis. The diagnosis, of course, you can do a laboratory workup. If the patient has been operated recently, you may find um, some infection maybe. So just to rule out infection because if you are doing any intervention, there should not be any post-operative infection. The best, uh, as we were discussing in the, in the, in the morning, is a MRI with a contrast. So gadolinium in, uh, MRI should be the best one to tell you uh, whether there is uh, enough of arachnoiditis or fibrosis contributing to the symptoms. So that's the best uh, diagnostic test to find out whether a patient has epidural fibrosis. So once he has fibrosis, basically what do you do? Um, of course, surgery is out because any further surgery would add on to this problem. So we do a mechanical dissolution of this epidural fibrotic scar, which is resulting in axial pain or radicular pain, and which is refractory to conservative management. So of course you have given transforminal steroids, you have given epidural steroids, but nothing is working. So what do you do? Uh, basically you can do an intervention with the help of a specialized design catheter, which is called the RAX catheter. RAX is, is a pain physician in US who designed this catheter and is very helpful 
all the morning we were doing with a epidural catheter, but this is a specially designed catheter which can move along the along the areas where there is fibrosis. There is so much crosstalk here. Can we have some silence for the speaker? Everybody, please quiet it down. Wow, great! What a relief. So, <laughs> so this is the CRM positioning generally done in prone position. And uh, the best route would be a cordial route if you are targeting up to L4-5. But if it is L3, L4, or L2, L3, you may have to go through a uh, interlaminar approach. But just like you put a spinal cord stimulator needle, you have to be going obliquely, touching the lamina, and then entering into the epidural space so that you can negotiate your catheter to the higher ups. But for L4-5 and L5-S1 region, you can definitely go through this. So this is a RAX catheter. And you see this is a specially designed uh, epidural needle, which is curved. And this is the capsule. This is the, st the stillet, which is steel. And this then generally goes uh, goes into the, steel, the spi spiral tip catheter with a 15 degrees bend. And you can negotiate this catheter. Of course, on the fluoroscopy, you see this catheter. And you keep negotiating into the epidural space uh, wherever you find a region after doing an epidural down. Through the corner route, the catheter is inserted. So first you put a die as you saw it in the morning, outline the additions and the targeted nerve route like we saw the right sided L5 was not, doing, was not being delineated. You put some hyaluronidase about 1500 units, 10 ml of preservative free saline which could be hypertonic saline along with 40 milligrams of tramsinolon. And then you keep the catheter there and for three con continuous days admit the patient and continuously infuse local anesthetic uh, hypertonic saline to break the vicious cycle as well as to break the adhesion which are there in the epidural space. And the same procedure is repeated after six to eight weeks to get a very favorable results in terms of these adhesions. So this is what you see in a, in a epidurogram, a typical Christmas tree appearance, but there is a filling defect in this region. So this particular area has to be targeted and then we put this catheter it then and then negotiate this. You can see the catheter going right up to the L5 nerve root and we are putting the die, you can see now the lateral recess is open and you can see the S1 root also is getting open unlike in the epidurogram which you, you saw no S1 and no L5. So this is how this additionalization is done. This is the catheter through which specialized catheter which has a filter also which is put in and then in, we tunnel it and then keep it for three days so that you can do a good infusion. Dural puncture can happen because this is a stillet which is uh, which is made of steel. So if you are pushing it hard, you can put, and there are regions there, so you can produce a dural puncture. You can have the medications going into the subarachnoid and subdural space. Catheter can shear. This is a major complication because while pulling off the stillet, you can shear the catheter, and some part of the catheter can remain there. This has happened. Infection, then of course hemodynamic instability, bleeding or aspiration from the epidural space, and of course there will be dermatomal numbness if you are using large amount of local anesthetic. Thank you so much. Thank you. In time. Mm -hmm.